And above all of that, he is neck deep into the pocket of Mr. Peter Obi. Uh, good afternoon to all. <clears throat> to you all. Um, Mike is biased in my favor. So whatever he says, please discount it. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here this afternoon. I had not planned to be here because there were a series of other things going on. But through to our working relationship, I said to him, Mike, I will step in here for five minutes just to honor you and what you've done, then I'll leave and go and do other things. But as you've seen, I've been here for more than 30 minutes. And it's the God's own doing, the Lord's own doing. And Reverend, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm glad that I stayed back to listen to you. I had seen the tape about Abaklike and <clears throat> That is something I want to speak to. I'm a Catholic, born Catholic, and that's all I'll say about it. I'm a Christian. I haven't been privileged to speak in tongues or things like that. But I recognize value, and I recognize indicative processes when they unfold things that we don't understand. And it's about this process. I've been with Peter B for the last, or well, I've known him for a lifetime, but I've been by his side working with him uh, since 2012. I was his SSG. So I know this story about this process. But there are other sides of it that are far more greater than I and everybody in this room and beyond our comprehension. And I just want to share two of those with you. On a quiet Saturday like this, I was here in Abuja. I had no plans. I was sitting in my hotel room and the phone rings. And it's my boss. And he says, where are you? I says, I'm in Abuja. He said, get to the airport and go to Lagos. I'll call you and tell you what I need you to do. I did not ask any questions. I packed my bag, rushed to the airport, caught a ticket, and got to Lagos. And there was a driver waiting for me. I got into the car and I said, any notice, any, where am I going to? Where's the boss? He says, the boss is in a koi. But he said, you should call him when you get in. So I called, he didn't pick up. And I called his assistant and I said, where am I supposed to be going in Lagos? He said, let me ask the boss. And he goes to him where he is, he's in Assumption in Falomo. And he says to me, drive to Festac, I'll send you the address. And lo and behold, I got the address on my phone. And it's somewhere in Festac. It's a church. I kept driving. I'm fairly familiar with Lagos. And just somewhere um, coming from the airport on this expressway, When I got the address, it says there are 5,000 Nigerian youths gathered for an event. The host of that event is the current president of Cannes, Archbishop Oko. And that's where I was supposed to go to. And here I was full of trepidation. I'm going to speak to 5,000 Nigerian youths. I had no message. I had nothing from His Excellency. What am I supposed to say to them? Halfway, as we turned into the first tack road, there was a beep on my phone. I looked, 
and it was a message from a reverend gentleman, a priest whom I've known for long, a very good friend of mine. And he had sent me a clip. I opened it. I read it. And I said, wow. My mission is accomplished. I took out my pen. I jotted a line from that message. I was at peace with myself. When I got to the place full with young people, and they announced that there was somebody here to represent Peter Obi, the hall went haywire. And the Archbishop said, we said there's somebody here to represent Peter Obi, and you're making this much noise. If Peter Obi himself comes here, what would happen? The, wall, the hall went haywire. Anyway, I was called up to the stage. And I told them the story I've just told you, how I got from Abuja to this place without the message. But what was the message my friend, the priest, sent to me? Simply, on 25th day of June, which was a Saturday, simply said, Isaiah 1, 19. I got to the stage, I said, I have a simple message for you. And this is how I got the message. If you have your Bibles, if you have your phones, open up to Isaiah 119. And you can do that. And that is the rest of the story. And it tallies with what the Reverend said today. Isaiah 119. If you are, maybe some of you should read it. So it wouldn't be me reading it. If you are willing and obedient, you shall do what? And that was all I said on the stage. And I said, since there are so many bishops and anointed people here, I will allow them to interpret what that verse meant. And I went and sat down. That was my first encounter spiritual that this mission is ordained the second encounter came on the 29th of september it was a day after we had the rally in jaws and his excellency had come back that very morning and we were at the international conference center to sign the peace accord but what had happened was that His Excellency came back without his photographer because he came back by helicopter. So I found myself, I was with Val, playing the photographer. So my phone was tied up, I was recording, I was... And while I was doing that, my phone kept ringing incessantly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I looked at the number, I could not recognize the number. All he said was, Dan, as in Daniel. I did not take the call. And we finished the event. I totally forgot about it. And I went home. I was sitting with my wife having dinner. That number called again. And I'm like, oh, finally. And I took the call. And he happened to be a young man I had mentored many years ago. His father was my friend. His father was the ambassador of Guinea-Bissau when I was at the United Nations. And when he finished college, his father said, go to New York, look up my friend, Mr. Obaze, since you want to work to the UN, he will help you. So he came on board, we took him on board, and we stayed friends ever since. He works for the United Nations in Senegal, but he's from Guinea-Bissau. He had gone back to New York to visit some friends. And they told him, oh, Mr. Baze was here a few weeks back. He came for a funeral of a friend. We did, we did not really see him because uh, we didn't share time with him, but we saw him at the funeral. And he left. So he said, oh, I must remember to call him. So he called me on that day, but he called me with a message. And that was why he was frantically calling me. On his way back from New York, he went to Guinea-Bissau 
to visit his mother in a village. And he spent two days with his mother. Quiet period with mom, and he left. And returned to Senegal. The day after he left, the oldest man in the village, who is about 95, came to visit his mother and said, woman, your son was here. So the mother was like, yeah, okay. He said, I did not see him, but I know he was here. He spent two days with you. He said, and he's gone back. He said, yes. He said, call your son and tell him that his friend in Nigeria works for a man who wants to become the Nigerian president. Tell your friend and those who work for that man that they should continue doing what they are doing because it's going to come to fruition. It was, for me, unprecedented. I made the note of the date, and this is the first time I'm sharing this publicly. But I know there are so many other testimonies beyond what I have personally experienced. And when you spoke about those who work for Peter, who are around him, um, I'm inclined to give interviews, but if you look, in the last seven months, you won't see me on my face on television. I don't do interviews. I don't, actually, I don't speak publicly anymore. It's not my place. It's for him to speak. What we try to do is to help him say those things that will lead to the success of this mission, the redemption of Nigeria. I just want to thank all of you that have come out here today. Thank my brother, my friend, our director of administration for all he's done and all he's continued to do. And thank the obedience because I know, like the Bible says, there are so many people who were in doubt. Today they believe. Tomorrow they will believe. And in the fulfillment of the message and the mission, they will come to accept that Nigeria is in the hands of God. Thank you and God bless you.